Welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, and envies, and thank you for tuning back into St. Andrew TV, a cure for your Monday blues. I am your host, Andrew, and today we are going to go over how to load a Colt single action army, how the old military manual states it. I have a lot of new faces on the channel, and even old heads on the channel will probably see some sort of information that is new to them be brought to their attention. This is a manual that I found of the proper way to load old Springfields, you know, the old trapdoor rifles, and the Colt Single Action Army, and I actually wanted to demonstrate it to everyone today of how to properly, according to the military in the 1870s, load your Colt Single Action Army. And along with that, I will also show you the proper way to draw it in terms of the proper military way. So let's get to it. Now this information comes to us from a website called MPS History, and it's pretty much a reenactor's manual that is boiled down to the most historically accurate. And today we are going to focus on the pistol portion of it. So I'm going to turn to the side here and show you how to properly retrieve your pistol from the cavalry holster. At the command draw, unbutton the flap of the holster with the right hand and grasp the stock the back of the hand to the body. At the command pistol, draw and raise the pistol. The hand holds the stock with the thumb and last three fingers, the forefinger over the guard and the guard to the front, barrel vertical, elbow near the body, the wrist as high as the shoulder and six inches in front of it. This is the position of raised pistol. When out of the holster, the pistol is habitually carried in the position of raised pistol. Obviously, I read that from the website, but I'm just following instructions like our brethren back then would have. Now that we got our Colt Single Action Army out to this position, it is time to load it like our brethren did back in those times. To start the process, we place the pistol in our left hand with our left index finger going across the front of the frame like so, and our left thumb going over the top of the frame and gently placed on the cylinder right here. This is all being done while the gun is pointing in a downward position about 45 degrees and gently swayed towards the left like so. So what we're going to do from this point forward is we're going to take our right hand and we're going to place the gun in half cock while opening the loading gate. This is where you take your 45 Colt round. As you can see, these are fired, so I'm not even loading live rounds into this for the sake of safety but you place cartridge in between your fingers like so, find the chamber and drive it home with your thumb. Then you take your left thumb and move the cylinder over like so. You take a, another, same process, load it into the chamber and keep going. A lot of you at home are probably sitting there wondering why I didn't skip one, you know, the cowboy load. Everybody talks about the cowboy load and how it is safe. Absolutely, it is a safer method. I'm loading this historically accurately to show the difference in the loading procedures because I'm sure I don't even follow this technique to a T, but I'm just showing you the difference of what the time frames suggest. Obviously on this website, you are going to see that they tell you to load one, then skip one because this is for reenactors. They're obviously not gonna carry six live cartridges in a gun that if you bump the hammer, you're gonna make it go boom. So that is the only difference in the procedure, but the technique of how you hold it and how you manipulate all the moving parts remains the same. Now that we've got six in the cylinder, we are going to place our finger in the trigger guard, our right index finger, 
We're gonna pull back the hammer and we are gonna bring it back up. And you have just successfully loaded your Colt single action army in the historical military sense. I appreciate everybody getting this far into the video. Obviously, I am not too keen on military history, but I thought this was very interesting. It means this firearm that we all beloved so much was adopted by the military in 1873. And even further down the road, I would like to go out to the desert and actually show you the proper way that the military would fire a Colt single action army while in the field, which is a little different than what the movies portray and even how I shoot it or maybe even you shoot it. So look for that coming up in the future. Please leave a like if you've enjoyed today's video or leave me a comment stating what you liked or tell me what I should do next. In case you missed it, I actually started a Patreon that the link will be down in the description. It is also in the bio of my YouTube channel, but do not feel obligated to go donate. I do love the consistent support from my fan base and I like to keep it that way. I like everything being fan funded, but like I said, do not feel obligated. If you would like to, go ahead, but the content is gonna remain free regardless. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed as of late, but for those of you who have came across this channel or this video because you like military history, maybe you're new to Colt Single Action Armies and you wanted to replicate what it would look like to load it in the 1870s and 1880s. Or maybe you just found me by accident and you think, Wow, he could have done better with his military outfit from the 1880s. Think about hitting that subscribe button, because you're a daisy, if you do.